Okay, so I know a couple of you were having some problems on IXL, so I wanted to do a few problems so that you could see how to do it. Um, so let's look at this first one. In this first problem, they ask us for the measure of angle FGH. So FGH, that would be this angle right here. Since this angle is coming from its vertex is on the circle, that means that this is going to be an inscribed angle. Now, what we know about inscribed angles is that the arc measure across from it is always equal to two times that angle. So this arc measure straight across is going to be two times whatever this is. Um, or our angle equals half of what our arc is. We're not given our arc here, um, so we're going to need to find it in order to be able to find this inscribed angle. The only information we're given are these angles here. And so since these angles are coming from the center, that means both of these are central angles. And what we know about central angles is that our central angle is always going to be equal to the arc across from it. So this angle and this arc is the same. So this arc right here is 125. This angle and this arc is the same. So this angle is 122. And I know that the arc measure of an entire circle should be 360. So if I added these two up and subtracted from 360, that would give me this piece here. So I'm going to add 125 plus 122. And that gives me 247. I'm going to subtract that from 360. Malik, please come to the front desk. And that is going to give me 113. So this arc measure right here is 113. Now, I'm looking at this arc measure and I'm trying to find the inscribed angle. So, if I'm looking for an inscribed, we're going to use these formulas. So, to find this piece here, we're going to take our arc measure, which is 113, and we're going to half that. So, if we half 113, that's going to be 56.5. So this angle will be 56.5 degrees. Okay, let's look at this example. Here, they want us to find RST. And so RST is going to be this angle right here. Since its vertex is on the circle, this one's inscribed. So we know that to find that inscribed angle, we're going to need this angle, I mean this arc measure, across from the angle. Um, but it's not given. So we know that um, our arc equals one half of the angle, I'm sorry, the angle equals one half of the arc. So we're going to have to use the only information that's given. The only information given is this angle right here, which is 133. Since its vertex is in the center, that means it is a central angle. And what we know about central angles is that the angle is equal to the arc across from it. So if we're looking across, this is going to be the same arc measure. So if this angle is 133,
this arc measure is also 133. So now we can just plug into the formula to find S. So our angle will equal one half of 133. So if you have 133, that gives you 66.5. So this would equal 66.5. Let's try one more. Now, in this one, they asked me for I, G, J. So I'm looking for this angle measure right here. Since its vertex is in the center, this is going to be a central angle. And so what I know about central angles is that the angle equals the arc, and the arc across from it is this here. So I need to find this. <clears throat> the only information I am given is this angle here, which is 30. This is an inscribed angle, and so what I know about inscribed angles is um, the angle equals half of the arc, or in this case, since we want to find our arc, which is a cross, we would do arc equals 2 times the angle. So I would multiply 30 by 2, which means this piece would be 60. Now, we still need this piece in order to find our central angle. So I'm going to use my knowledge of circles and diameters. I see that this line in the center goes all the way across, which means it's a diameter and it splits this circle in half. And all of us know that a semicircle adds to be 180, or the measure of a semicircle is 180. So what I would do to find this piece is do 180 minus the piece I don't need, which is 60, and that would leave me with 120. So this measure would actually equal 120. Our formula for central angle tells us our arc and our angle are exactly the same. So this angle would be 120. Okay, I'll do one more of these. Alright, here we want to find G H I. So this angle here, we see that its vertex is on the circle, so this is inscribed, and so our formula for inscribed angle is angle equals one half of the arc. Um, so that means we're looking at the arc across from that, which would be this arc right here. So I need this in order to find this. Now, the only information that I am given are these two angles here. Since these angles are in the center, that means these are central angles. And what I know about central angles is that the angle equals its arc across from it. So the arc across from this angle is this right here, and this is 110. And the angle, or the arc across from this, is this arc here. And so that measure would also be the same, which is 101. Now, I know that the whole entire arc of, my arc measure of a circle would be 360. So what I would do is I would add 110 and 101, which would give me 11. I would subtract that from 360 so that I could find just this piece here. That would give me 149. So this piece here is 149. 
Now, I'm wanting to find this angle, which is inscribed, and so I know the angle is going to be half of whatever the arc is. So I would have to divide 149 by 2, which would give me 74.5 degrees. Okay, I hope this helps.